Monsters are everywhere. 안녕하세요 여러분. Welcome to Cinemedia, where we only talk about South Korean movies and dramas. I couldn't wait to watch today's show for two reasons. One, because it was recommended to me by you guys. And two, I'm a huge fan of Shin Agyun and I haven't seen him in a series yet. So let's talk about Beyond Evil or Camel, which means monster. Side note, director Bon Joon-ho's The Host is also called Camel. Very different subject matter though. The show stars Shin Agyun, Yeo Jingu, who was great in Hwaii a Monster Boy, Ho Song Tae, Che Jin Ho, Kireyan, Che Dae Hoon, and lots of others. The story takes place in a small town where Shin Agyun plays a detective. Things are not looking so good because apparently a serial killer is roaming the town, cutting off the fingertips of his victims. The case is especially bad for Shin Agyun because 20 years ago a very similar murder had happened, plus his sister also disappeared and only her fingertips were found and Shin Agyun got arrested for it. To make matters even worse, a young police officer from Seoul arrives, played by Yeo jin and his main target is Shin Hagyun. He's hell-bent on taking him down because he believes that Shin Hagyun got away with murder. Plus, he's the son of a high-ranking police officer. And it's even more complicated than that. The last drama I reviewed on this channel was Sisyphus, which was a major disappointment for me. So with Beyond Evil, I was hoping that I'll at least get a great performance from Shin Hagyun. And I did. And I got so much more. What really surprised me was just how emotional this drama was. When I say emotional, I don't mean it's romantic, no, 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 no. There's a huge variety of emotions in the show, but romance isn't one of them. Sadness, grief, loss, anger, hatred, the darker side of us. For me, it's much more interesting. The dark side is always much more interesting, right? So Beyond Evil is a highly emotional ride, especially the first half of the show. It's very intense, and a lot of it is psychological, which is right up my alley. Most characters carry a huge emotional load with them, and since the show doesn't really provide answers for quite a long time, it's quite disorienting in the best possible way. It's really hard to tell who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. Are there any, any good guys here at all? If you've seen Shin Agyun before, you know that he's an amazing actor. If you haven't, go check out Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, or Running Man, or Thirst. He has a pretty weird role in that movie. Honestly, he was the only reason I really wanted to watch this show, and this is probably his best performance I've seen. Granted, the writing of his character is so brilliant and so layered, but it wouldn't work if he wasn't as amazing as he is. He plays a detective who was a suspect 20 years ago, so how did he turn out to be a detective? And he's not just a simple detective, he knows the law in and out, which also means he knows how to go around it. So he does seem suspicious. And on top of that, his reactions to certain things are weird to say the least. And he seems to have psychotic tendencies, so it's really easy to picture him as a murderer. But he also seems to have a very human side to him and it's just f***ing confusing. Playing such a complex character like that requires an actor to display everything he's got and Shin Agyun did put 150% effort into this role. I was mesmerized by his performance here, he was beyond incredible. He was amazing. And so was Yeo jin -gu. He plays a younger detective who also knows the law really well, so he also knows how to go around it. Both him and Shin Agyun are on the edge of committing something illegal. Both of them have something to hide. They're not these squeaky clean, respectable police officers. Or are they? But one thing is for sure. They do not like each other. So imagine their faces when their boss orders them to become partners. Honestly, the best part of Beyond Evil was their relationship for me. They both suspect each other. They hate each other's guts, but sometimes... For brief moments, they really seem to appreciate each other. And those were my favorite moments. They have incredible chemistry together. I desperately wanted them to get along. And when they did, it was amazing to watch. But usually these are just fleeting moments. And as I was watching the show, I was like, Okay, they're fine with each other now. Okay, they're cool. They're okay, they're okay, they're okay, they're okay. Ah, they're not okay. And on top of that, it was a lot of fun to listen to their conversations because they keep switching between formal and informal language. When things are well between them, they speak very respectfully, but whenever there is tension, they switch back to informal language right away. It was a lot of fun. Beyond Evil is worth watching for their performance alone, but there is so much more. There is some pretty heavy-handed criticism when it comes to the jurisdiction of the police, for example. I don't know how accurate it is, but it seems pretty accurate, and it's really sad. It's really sad to see how much the police can't do because their hands are tied by the law. Add corruption to this mix, and you've got a pretty fucked up legal system. Beyond Evil also deals with the theme of corruption. Now, one thing that might throw you off is the fact that the show basically switches genres halfway. The first seven episodes are definitely a thriller, a psychological thriller. Murders are happening again, it's very likely that Shin Agyun is the killer, the characters are all broken in one way or another, everyone has something to hide, you don't know who to trust, and it's written and structured so well that I was just glued to the screen. After episode 7, the show basically turns into a detective story. The thriller elements are almost nowhere to be found after that. It was still good, but if you like thrillers better, you might get disappointed by the second half of Beyond Evil. I happen to like both genres, but I gotta be honest, the first half was way more interesting because of its psychological and highly emotional nature. Before I talk about my problems, I have to mention one more actor, and that is Kireyan. 
She plays the mother of a police officer, who happens to be a longtime friend of Shinagyun's character, and she's also a public figure who's aiming to become the mayor of the town. And she is just a despicable bitch. But my god, was Kireyan amazing. In a way, she was a deeply caring person, at least for her son, but I just hated her with all my heart while also appreciating her amazing acting. Seriously, she was marvelous in this role. So, if the show is originally called Monster, who is the monster here? Well, monsters come in all shapes and sizes. I firmly believe that it's impossible to get to know someone, and the show takes advantage of that. Because no matter how close you are to a person, no matter how long you know said person, you'll never really get to know that person. So, what would you do if your best friend of 20 years turned out to be a serial killer? I'm not saying that is what happens in the show, it's just the notion of it all that monsters are all around us, and you think you know them. You don't. And this show knows that. Okay, so Beyond Evil is full of tension, full of very intense emotions, full of twists and turns, full of amazing performances. My only real problem with the show is the fact that in episode 7, a large portion of the story ends. So much so that I remember thinking to myself, what the hell are they going to do now? It seems like things are resolved. Well, they are and they aren't. But for 3 or 4 episodes after that, the show does lose quite a bit of steam, and I gotta be honest, I was bored. The show is not able to keep the intensity up, it loses its direction for 3 or 4 episodes, and it was definitely a letdown. That's my main problem. The other is that Han Sung-tae plays a pretty shady character, and his big character trait is him inserting Russian sentences into his speech, and it gets old really fast, and it gets really annoying. I was really annoyed by it. Especially when he says something bad about a person he's having a conversation with, and when that person asks him what he said, he's just like, oh, nothing, it's just the weather is nice. Right. Totally believable. Your intonation is a dead giveaway, asshole. With that said, the show gets really strong by the end, and the last two episodes are pretty much perfect. They're emotionally rewarding, there are some truly incredible moments, the intensity is back at full throttle, and it was really satisfying. Because I was bored for 3 or 4 episodes, I originally wanted to give the show 85%, but looking at the big picture, and how much I actually enjoyed the last two episodes, I enjoyed them just as much as the first half of the show, I'm going to give this one 90%. Shin Agyun is an acting master, and Yeo Jingwei is fantastic also. Like I said, it's a highly emotional drama, and it's also really dark. And the darkness comes from human nature. This show is right up my alley, and it's awesome, and I highly recommend it. And that's that! Yarabun, onurin yogi kajiman eo, yang sang paju shasa kam san nida, yang sang chuam yan, kudok kaju seo. See you all very soon. Tamshikanaman no yorabun, and yongi kaseo. Bye!